Welcome back to Extra Help from Mr. A. Here I am in Cuba. I'm in paradise. And that has me wondering one thing. What can you do with a paradise? I can tell you what you can do with a paradise. You can roll those paradise and use them in probability experiments. So today we're going to talk about two topics. We're going to talk about what is probability and how do we calculate probability. If you're already pretty familiar with probability, then please feel free to click the flashing calculator to jump ahead in the video to the section where I do some calculations. Otherwise, get rid of most of your seat because you're only going to need the edge as we discuss what is probability. We can think of probability as a line, a line that ranges from impossible to certain and a range of possibilities in between. We have unlikely things, we have likely things, and in the middle of those we have neither unlikely nor likely, sometimes called even chance. But what do these terms mean? Well, let's take a look at a few examples. Let's take a look at something that's certain. Imagine you have a brown paper bag and you also have seven blue marbles. So you put the seven blue marbles into the empty bag. Then, if you were to reach into that bag and pull out a marble, it would be certain that that marble would be blue. There was nothing else in the bag. That's all it can be, is a blue marble. So that's an example of a certain thing that could happen. Let's take a look at something that's impossible. Uh, we'll talk, look at those pair of dice that I mentioned earlier. Now, typical dice are numbered 1 to 6. If you rolled both dice and added them together, it's impossible for you to get a sum of 1 because the minimum number on both dice is 1. So if you added those two together, the minimum number you would get would be 2. Similarly, you couldn't roll a 13 because the maximum combined number is 12, or 6 on each die. What about something that's neither unlikely nor likely? Something that's in the middle of those things? Uh, well, let's take a look at those uh, typical cards that you might find in a deck of cards. Um, so cards usually come in four suits. There are spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. We have two red cards and two black cards. If you were to reach into a deck of cards and pull out a card at random, you would have an even chance of getting a red card or a black card because there's an equal amount of each of them. What about something that's unlikely? Well, in English, we have a great saying, uh, that'll happen when pigs fly. Now, pigs flying is extremely unlikely, but I'm not ready to give up on the dream of a piloting porker just yet. Aside from strapping a rocket to a pig's back, which I don't recommend, by the way, there could be some sort of genetic experiment. Who knows? Extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely, but impossible? I'm going to say no for now. Get out of here, pig. What about something that's likely? Um, well, uh, if you picked a date at random, say July 18th, um, I would say it's likely to be warm on July 18th here in Ontario, which is in the Northern Hemisphere. Why? Because it tends to be warmer in the summer than it is in the winter. Uh, so I would say on July 18th, it will probably be warm. Now, is it necessarily going to be warm? No, there could be a rainstorm, it could be cold, who knows? Um, but for now, I'm just going to say it's likely that it will be warm on July 18th, because that's something that will probably happen. So now let's talk about creating events along the probability continuum. Um, so imagine you had this problem. You can choose eight marbles, create a situation where pulling a red marble is impossible. So a situation where you can't pull a red marble. Well, um, easy. All you have to do is put in marbles that aren't red. So if you had eight blue marbles, throw in those blue marbles and it will be impossible to pull out a red one. They could be, blue, they could be green, they could be yellow, anything but red. So that's a situation where pulling a red marble is impossible. Now, what about a situation where pulling a red marble is unlikely? Um, well, in this case, what you'd have to do is you'd have to put in at least one red marble, but uh, just as long as they are outnumbered by the blue ones. So in this case, we have five blue marbles, three red ones, and so it's more likely that you're going to pull a blue than a red, but uh, it's still possible to pull a red in this case. What about a situation where it is neither likely nor unlikely? In this case, uh, your red marbles and non-red marbles would have to be equal in number, so you'd have to have... Um, four red marbles and uh, four non-red marbles. So in this case, I have four red and uh, four blue. What about a situation where pulling a red is likely? 
Um, well, in this case, make sure the red ones outnumber the, the uh, non-red ones. So in this case, I have seven red ones, one blue one. So pulling a red one is extremely likely, very likely, uh, but not certain, as you could still pull the blue. And then in a situation where pulling a red marble is certain, we've already looked at one like this. All you have to do is, you guessed it, just put in some red marbles and nothing else. Uh, then in that case, pulling a red marble would be certain. I uh, wanted to make a quick note on theoretical versus experimental probability. So these are two types of probability. Theoretical probability is the predicted outcome of a probability experiment. So um, something that you predict will happen. Experimental probability is what actually happens. Uh, for example, let's talk about a coin toss. Um, in a coin toss, you have a 50% um, chance of getting a head or a 50% chance of getting tails. Um, those are your options, and you should get heads half the time and tails half the time. So if you were to r flip a coin 10 times, um, you would expect to see about five tosses, uh, heads, five tosses, tails. Now we know from our own personal experience that that's not the case. Sometimes you might flip uh, six heads, sometimes you might flip uh, seven tails. Um, so the theoretical and the experimental don't always jive up. The way you get the experimental to more closely match the theoretical is by doing more trials. So the more times you flip that coin, the closer your experimental probability is going to be to your theoretical probability. So um, if you were to flip it 100 times, you would expect it to be closer to 50. Um, if you were to do it a thousand times you'd expect it to be closer to 500. The more trials you do, the closer you get to that theoretical probability. So now we're going to the next section, which is how do we actually calculate probability? Um, we think of probability as a fraction. Um, in the numerator on top, we have our desired outcome, what we're looking for. Um, and at the bottom, we have our total number of possible outcomes. So let's imagine uh, we just have a single die and we're wondering about the probability of rolling a six. Um, so we have to think about that die again. Now there are six sides and six numbers, which means that uh, there you have five sides that aren't six and only one side that is six. There are six total possible outcomes. So um, it could land on any side, uh, which means there are six possible outcomes. Now, of those six outcomes, there's only one we're looking for. We only care about the one where it rolls, where you roll a six. So there's one desired outcome out of six total possible outcomes. So the probability of rolling a six on a typical die is one in six. Another thing you could think about is, for example, um, what would be the probability of rolling an even number? Well, um, there are three numbers that are even between one and six. 2, 4, and 6. So the probability of rolling an even number is 3 out of 6. There are three outcomes that we're looking for out of six po total possible outcomes. Now let's compare these two to see which one has is more likely, to see which one has a higher probability. So we have rolling an even number or rolling a 6. So we'll put those fractions up here for you. Uh, rolling an even number, as you remember, was 3 out of 6. Rolling a 6 is only one side out of 6 total sides. So those are your fractions. Um, and then what we do is we just go ahead and do some division. So 3 out of 6 is the same thing as 3 divided by 6. 1 out of 6 is the same thing as 1 divided by 6. What do those equal? 3 out of 6 is equal to 0 0.5. And 1 divided by 6 is 0 0.1666666 all the way on to infinity. Uh, that's a bit of a messy number. Let's just round that uh, to the hundredths column. Um, so those 6s are going to round up. So it's going to be 0 0.17. What's that as a percentage? Uh, well, let's take a look. Uh, 0 0.5, if we move the decimal place two spaces to the right, we get 50%. And same with the 0 0.17, we move, it to, we move that decimal two places to the right and we get 17%. Which one's bigger? I'm sure you already guessed it, but of course, 50% is bigger than 17%. What if you were looking at the total number of possible outcomes. You wanted to figure out how many possible outcomes there were and what exactly they would be. They would be. Let's go back to that coin toss example and let's imagine we are flipping a coin three times and we want to find out all the all the possible ways you could flip those coins. 
On your first toss, you can get either heads or tails. Um, if you got heads the first time uh, and you flipped it again, you could get heads or tails. If you've got tails the first time and flipped it again, you could get heads or tails. So now there are four possible combinations. Heads, 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 tails. Tails, heads, tails, tails. And then if we were to flip one more time, uh, each of those could go two other ways as well. So we can make a list. We can make a chart. Um, and I'd, I like to abbreviate them. So I would do HHH for heads, heads, heads. HHT, heads, heads, tails. Heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and tails, tails, tails. Those are all of your possible um, outcomes. Now, imagine we were looking for situations. We wanted to find the probability of rolling at least two heads in a row. So in our first one, we, uh, we have two heads in a row. We have uh, heads, heads, heads. So that's one of them. Another one would be heads, heads, tails. And the other one, the third one, would be tails, heads, heads. So if we were to make that as a fraction, um, we have eight possible outcomes. And of those, only three of them have two heads in a row. So let's bring it all back here. We've got our continuum at the top that ranges from 0% to 100%. Or if you're looking at it as a decimal, it ranges from 0 to 1.00. 1.00 uh, would be um, certain, 0 would be impossible. So let's try to find out where this would land on the number line. Well, 3 divided by 8 is either 0 0.375 if you're looking at it as a decimal or 37.5%. Um, and if we put that on our number line, uh, we would find it would get right about there and that would be an unlikely result. Possible, but unlikely. Let's go to a summary here. Probabilities exist on a continuum of possibility. That continuum ranges from impossible to certain with varying possibilities between them. Something that's unlikely is still possible, it just probably won't happen. Something that's likely probably will happen, but it isn't guaranteed to happen. Probabilities can be expressed in words or numerically as fractions, decimals, or percents. With more trials, experimental probability becomes closer to theoretical probability. If you predict that you will flip heads half the time, um, you're more likely to be closer to that 50% of the time the more trials you do. So if you do 10 trials, um, you will be closer to theoretical probability if you did 100 trials. So you'll be closer to 50 than 50% um, if you did it that way. And then finally, tree diagrams can be helpful in identifying all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope it's been helpful. I, if it has, please consider donating to our classroom wish list at Amazon.ca, and the link for that is in the description. My class loves to read. They love to get new books, and I want to make learning as fun as possible for them, and that means giving them lots of choice. So if this video has been helpful, please consider donating to our wish list. We would really appreciate it. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks very much for watching. Extra help from Mr. A.